Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification where we are in Chapter 1 right now talking about managing the test activities. Shall be moving on to the next segment that is 1.2, the context of testing. And we have a lot of topics here. So today we shall be talking about the first segment that is 1.2.1, test stakeholders. And as a part of test stakeholders, we'll try understanding who are stakeholders for testing and who are stakeholders. Well, to kick off, this is very small and indeed very important topic because for a test manager, it becomes very crucial, first of all, to understand who are our stakeholders. So it's, it's more of like understanding who shall we be communicating to throughout the life cycle whom shall we rely on getting our information and who will be relying on us to get the information back from us. So there are stakeholders who are ahead of us. There are stakeholders who are after us. So a test manager in, in the initial phases should try to recognize their stakeholders. Sometimes the stakeholders can be internally and can sometimes be outside to the organization as well. So a test manager should recognize all their stakeholders and also understand their accountability in terms of collaborations uh, in terms of gathering the information, their timeline, aligning our test, test activities to that of the availability of certain information from these stakeholders. And for every such thing, the understanding of stakeholders becomes very crucial. So let's quickly jump onto this and try understanding that who are our stakeholders. So uh, the test stakeholders are individuals or groups, groups with a direct or indirect interest in the product's quality, and below is a typical list of potential stakeholders amended to reflect their diverse interest in testing. So uh, the very first definition is very, very clear and very indeed uh, making sense that uh, your set of stakeholders may vary from, you know, the list what we'll be discussing from here as well. And at the same time, the definition to stakeholder is any such person in the organization or maybe outside the organization who has any kind of interest in the project. So they can be persons who are contributing in terms of supplying a service. They can be even people who might be supplying data to you. They may be people who might be giving requirements to you, or they may be people who uh, are dependent on your test cases to draft that documentation. So it is very crucial for us to understand uh, inward, outward, uh, upward, downward stakeholders in the entire life cycle. And most importantly, this will help us to get aligned. But again, this is just a comprehensive, typical list. So uh, you may have to recognize your stakeholders in your project. So build that intuition that being a test manager, we might be learning a topic here, but in the real world, things may be slightly different. So however, they cannot be a part of the syllabus, but we get the context of that testing, uh, how important it is to know your stakeholders. So to get started with, the very first thing we have, the group of people from the development team, so we have developers, developers lead, and development manager. In addition to implementing the system on the test and acting on the test results, these stakeholders are also involved in unit testing and contributing to the testing process. We know exactly what the development team is responsible for, and we do have developers who are the core people working on this. Development leads to coordinate with the uh, collaborations, getting the job done, instructions, etc., and development manager to be coordinated with the management for the timelines, availability of the code, uh, aligning the testing activities to those of, those of the corresponding testing activities. And in case of any kind of disputes, any kind of conflicts, the managers again are contacted. So we are not just saying development team as a set of stakeholder. We are saying the particularly the three different designation also because we reach out to individual designation for different different tasks and different responsibilities. So understand that we have three stakeholders here and three stakeholders are reached out for three different reasons. Same way, if you come to the next one, we have the testers, test leads and test managers. These individuals generally prepare the testware which includes developing the test plan and contributing to the testing process through activities such as requirements analysis, uh, test design, test execution, defect tracking and reporting, test automation, test progress reporting. So we are our own stakeholders because if you are a test manager, you need to know how many test leads do you have, you need to know how many testers you have. As a manager, 
uh, you may not be directly interacting. Say, for example, you may not be directly interacting with the concrete testers, but you might be taking the status update from the test leads. So uh, that's how you need to understand the hierarchy of the organization. So your testing team members may also be your stakeholders for different information collected throughout the life cycle or even when you talk about things like uh, communicating information to them, gathering lessons from them, etc. The third set of group of people we have is from the project management. So we have project managers, product owners and business users. So they basically specify requirements, define the requested level of quality and recommend required coverage based on perceived risk. This also review work products, participate in user acceptance testing and make decisions based on the test results. So here the people are more of like defining the project schedule, the timelines, and when we talk about the business users, sponsors or not sponsors, basically they're going to the customer part, but yeah, business analyst or PO, product owner, they are the people who collect the information on terms of requirement and they uh, give you the clarity what is expected. They set the goals uh, by representing business. And at the same time, uh, we do talk about collaborating with them to get aligned to that, those of the product goals and uh, how much amount of testing to be done, how much coverage to be achieved and several other things. So yes, these are again set of other stakeholders we take care of. The next one is operations team. These are engaged in operational acceptance testing. They ensure the system's readiness for production and contribute to defining non-functional requirements. So uh, operation teams are seen as another set of stakeholders where they take care of more from the non-functional point of view. And at the same time, they generally perform the required operational testing, uh, even in the acceptance. And they may be more of like responsible to cross-check if the product is ready and stable enough to go live or not. But I may not relate this to the release management because they generally take care of uh, releases and their timelines. But these are the people who are the core competency people and they generally take care of the uh, definition of those things which makes the product go live in terms of technical factors. And finally, the last set of stakeholders are the common users, uh, customers and users altogether. So yes, a customer purchase the product while users directly utilize it. Both are key in defining requirements and should be involved in user acceptance testing to validate the product meets their needs. So we should understand the, first of all, the difference between the customer and the end users. Sometimes your customer are the end users, but sometimes they are not. Sometimes customer is a customer to you, but they may have their customers who will be using this system. For a quick example, that assume that a bank reaches out to you to develop an ATM software, an automated teller machine. So of course, I might be a development company developing the software for automated teller machine, giving it to a bank who is customer to me. But of course, bank is not going to use the ATM software. They're giving to going to give it to their customer, which are real users, okay? So users and customers may have differentiations depending on the type of product. Sometimes I'm making a system for their employees. Then customer is only the user. Right. So in that context, we may have to have a hairline difference between customer and user. And depending on the product and project characteristics, you can define who is your customer and who is your user. Their major responsibilities is to set the goal, uh, set the expectations, define the key requirements on high level. And at the same time, the users will be involved or customers will be involved in your alpha and beta testing. We have already discussed in detail alpha and beta testing at foundation level, so we exactly know what's the expectation from here. So put together, this is a typical list of stakeholders we had to discuss from here, from the syllabus, but indeed in the real world, technical support team, technical help desk team, or technical documentation team, and indirect and direct users. There are many such stakeholders we can talk about or you know, people who are supplying third-party softwares like web services can also be seen as the stakeholders. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.